So you're making water out of thin air? Water out of thin air. So we've got an endless supply. Uh, the water in the atmosphere, there's eight times more water in the atmosphere mm -hmm. than there is in all the rivers of the world. So. so 0.3 liters per hour in this room. But. Yeah, which is 39% relative humidity. Okay. And that's very, that's very low relative humidity. Okay. The ambient air, so just the atmospheric air comes in to the system. It goes through into a patented evaporation chamber where the it, the air is cooled and it condenses on a coil that we've created, which is a patented a patented device. Um, and once the water condenses on the coil, it comes out of the coil uh, or off the coil into a little reservoir. It gets pumped up into a carbon filter, uh, comes through the carbon filter, just gravity feed, and then it goes through a past a UV light. Uh, and on the way out of the system. Okay. And then once it's out of the system, we can plummet to anywhere you want in your kitchen, to a spigot at your sink or uh, to a water cooler or to your fridge where you've got the water from the door. So you've got fresh drinking water 24 hours a day made right, right from your own machine. I mean, we've developed this one for the residential market, uh, but our core technology, which is the water making component, uh, we can extract that core component and scale it up, scale it down, uh, put a number of them on a, on, in a situation which we call a water wall uh, so that it can be used in a humanitarian environment. Mm -hmm. We presented earlier this year at the UN with that very concept in mind. Well, it, this is our solo lounge table by IF, off-the-grid power source for your handheld devices, iPod, video camera, digital still camera. We have an audio system so you can plug in your iPod and play music back while you charge. Um, we have a 110 AC outlet which allows you to charge a, a standard appliance, much like a computer, laptop computer in particular. Um, that is powered by an integrated uh, 300 watt inverter. Within this device drawer we have two USB 2 uh, plugs or I should say sockets. One 12 volt socket. It's a standard like you'd see uh, in an automobile or a boat. All of this is controlled through a charging circuit that, or a charge controller that also collects and stores data on performance. So that can then be downloaded via a Bluetooth antenna to your laptop and uh, shared with your uh, fellow uh, solo lounge table owners. You may see one or two uh, uh, at a somebody's patio near the pool, uh, poolside, that sort of thing. Um, the other are resorts, cruise lines. Like. So what we have is a solution where we made a device that installs into a light fixture within five minutes. It's very simple. The thing that's really expensive about adding lighting controls is that you typically have to run control wiring to each light fixture. In our case, we're using wireless RF communications. And once we've added that digital communications, we can do any kind of control on the lights. We can upload a schedule to each light fixture. And not only can we do that, but we can um, connect the fixtures to sensors, motion sensors, daylight sensors. And we can also allow each occupant to have control of their own light. So here I have an iPod. This is kind of, I'm listening to my music, I'm working on my computer, I don't want that much light. And it allows me to say, oh, I just want one lamp on. And, and there you go, I have enough light to do my work. I'm able to step through and turn on or off each lamp. We're able to achieve paybacks of three to four years um, because of the increasing energy costs. Our system finally gives visibility to the building or homeowner to, so that they can see the impact of, of how they're living on the environment. Basically. So this is modeling the demo house. We've taken uh, it's an indication of measuring gas, water, and electric for that demo house. And then here is showing you what your current rate is uh, per hour and how much you've spent. You can look at any of this data based on uh, what the gas consumption is, based either based on dollar, or you can go look at it in terms of therms, or you can look at what the carbon, oops, the carbon, yeah, the carbon footprint is. You can say, I want to see. Uh, what the living room has done compared to the bathroom. And then that's going to show you what the relative usage is for one week, one month.
what we've done is we've taken a 10,000 year old technology that's, um, that's inherently sustainable, probably the best building material ever known to man, and um, very plentiful, low embodied energy, uh, locally available, um, earthen construction. And we've applied it to concrete block. And we have a block that is inherently sustainable. It's um, much better for the environment compared with traditional concrete block. Um, it takes 40% less energy to manufacture. It contains 50% recycled content. Just by switching out block that you would normally use traditionally with integrity block, there's no change to the building process at all, but you can get valuable lead credit. The block is an engineered soils composite. And so what we've done is we've been able to find soils that when combined in a proprietary manufacturing process, reach or exceed the building code of um, concrete block today.